Good friends, good books and a sleepy conscience. This is the ideal life. Mark Twain. Hello everyone, it's Shruti here. Welcome back to the old book part where we are all about the books. In today's video, I'll be talking to you about all the books that I've read in July. So I've read four fiction books and three non-fiction books in the month of July and I'll be talking about all of them today. Let's talk about Harper Lee's debut novel, To Kill a Mockingbird. This book is a prequel to the book Go Set a Watchman which was published half a century later, posthumously. This novel is set in the American town of Maycomb in the 1930s. It looks at a lot of flaws in the society like racism, gender inequality, prejudice, etc. through the eyes of a little girl, Scout Finch, incorporating humor in an innocent manner. There are a lot of interesting and touching elements in the story, like the trial of Tom Robinson, revenge of Bob Evans, the mysterious Radley house, etc. The relationship of Scout with her father Atticus, her brother Jem, their summer friend Dill, their maid Calpurnia, their aunt, their neighbors, etc. are well portrayed in the story. And the father-daughter relationship adds a lot of warmth to it. The book was well written, simple in nature and easy to understand. And I would recommend it to people of all ages. The next book is Deka Bhajuni's debut novel, Happy Birthday Turk. I have received this book as a part of the Reader Store book box which I have unboxed in the previous video. I will leave a link to the video in the description box below. So this is the first book in the Kayankaya series and another one from the series, One Man, One Murder, went on to win the 1992 German Crime Fiction Prize. The story is set in Germany in the 1980s. It deals with the death of a Turkish drug dealer, Ahmad Hamel. His wife, Ilter Hamel, hires a private investigator, Kemal Kayankaya, and this story revolves around his search for the murderer. He seeks the help of an ex-cop by the name Lof in his pursuit during the investigation. Even though the book is classified as pitch black noir, it fails to capture the feel of the genre. It lacks detail in character and background setup, and it doesn't create a gripping atmosphere or a or an intriguing storyline for a noir. This is a small book and an easy read and is and can be regarded as an entry level noir book for new readers. The next book is The Story of a Long Distance Marriage by Siddesh Namdar. I have received this book as part of the Caffeinated Conversations book box which was also unboxed in the previous video. This is the first book written by the author and the story falls in the romance genre. The story is about a young couple, Rohan and Ira, and the crisis in their relationship after Ira leaves for New York for further studies after a year of marriage. The author portrays the life of a normal urban couple who doesn't compromise between career and relationships and put in extra efforts to make it work. The book stresses enough on the need for openness in marriage and the couple giving each other space in the relationship. The story sounds very real with little fictional elements. It is a light read and a feel-good book. I recommend it to young adults as well as romance enthusiasts. The next book is 10 minutes 38 seconds in the strange world by Elif Shafak. Elif Shafak is one of the authors who can take your imagination to the next level. She makes us feel the emotions of the characters through her exemplary writing. The story is about Leila or Tequila Leila and her transition from a little girl who is a dreamer to a prostitute who is murdered and left in a trash can. The book is divided into three parts, the mind, the body and the soul. The mind takes us to the 10 minutes and 38 seconds right after her death when she remembers the good and bad experiences in her life through different sense. The body talks about the happenings after her body was found in the trash can, how her friends came together and how they remembered her. The soul deals with her friends finding out what Layla would have wanted and joining hands to fulfill her desire. The book lags a bit towards the initial pages, but apart from that, it's a very intriguing and engaging book. It takes us through the different cultures of the two cities, Van and Istanbul, 
through Laila's two lives, one in a protective household and the other one out there alone. I personally love the book and the writing and I would recommend it to all the young adults who love to learn about new cultures. Before we move on to the non-fiction category, I would like to request you to support us by liking and sharing the videos and subscribing to our channel. Coming back to non-fiction section, we have Copycat Marketing 101 by Berg Hedges. Berg Hedges is a financial guru who has authored around 7 books in the last 30 years on attaining financial freedom. This is a small book with a little over 100 pages, but it has teachings worth more than that. It talks about the power of leverage and how you can exponentially grow your wealth without investing much of your time in it and letting money work for money. The concept of leverage is all about breaking the time for money trap and this book talks a lot about different business models by which you can do that. It talks about corporations, real estaters, franchising, network marketing, etc. in this book. All in all, this book is very informative and thought provoking. And only if you can read and apply these thoughts into your life can you see the results. I would like to read out an excerpt from this book to you. One of my favorite business stories is about a middle-aged manager struggling to pay his bills. So he decides to get some advice from a financial expert. The manager makes an appointment to meet with a well-respected financial advisor whose office was located in a swanky building on Park Avenue. The manager enters the expert's elegantly appointed reception room, but instead of a receptionist, the manager is greeted by two doors, one marked employed and the other self-employed. He enters the door marked employed and is greeted by two more doors. One marked makes less than $40,000 and the other makes more than $40,000. He makes less than $40,000, so he enters that door only to find himself face to face with two more doors. The door on the left is marked saves more than $2,000 a year and the, and the one on the right is marked saves less than $2,000 a year. The manager has only about $1,000 in his savings. So he enters the door on the right only to find himself right back on Park Avenue. The moral of the story is that most people are like the manager. They choose to enter the doors of life that lead them right back to where they started. If you continue to do what you have always done, you will continue to get what you have always got. I hope this little story will inspire you to create a different outlook on your life. Next up we have Rich Dad Poor Dad by Robert Kiyosaki. Robert Kiyosaki is one of the best financial advisors in the world and he wrote this book after he retired at the age of 47. I've read this book a couple of times before but I had no intention of taking it up seriously because I was not very much interested in financial knowledge. But this time I've decided to take it word by word and apply it to all my financial decisions. In this book, he talks about how you can also be rich by thinking like a rich person. He stresses enough on the importance of financial education and how by knowing the laws of the land you can put them to use in your favor and be rich in the process. This is a book that has stayed in all the bestsellers lists for a long duration and has been translated into so many different languages. This is one of the best and the simplest personal finance book that you can find on the planet. And it will do you good if you follow the principles and apply it in your lives. The next book is Personality Plus by Florence Litter. This is Lito's second book and Lito has written around 19 books during her long career. Sadly, she passed away last month. May her soul rest in peace. Now back to the book. This book talks about the four personality types, namely sanguine, choleric, melancholic and phlegmatic and their traits. It also talks about how each personality type can manage themselves to overcome their weaknesses and boost their strengths. Only when we can find out the personality types of ourselves and the people around us can we tailor a suitable approach and a plan of action for improvement. This one has a personality questionnaire by which you can analyze yourselves and find your personality type. This contains 40 rows of 4 words each from which you have to choose one word from each row that most often applies to you. And the definitions for all the words are given towards the end of the book in the appendix section. 
The personality profile questionnaire is also available online and I'll leave a link to it in the description box below. So these are the books that I've read in July. You can also read detailed reviews of the books in my website, theoldbookbarn.com. I'll leave a link to each of them in the description box below. Thanks for watching. See you soon. Bye.